Hey guys, so Royal Clutch sent me their RK61, which is one of the cheapest hot swap keyboards you can buy right now. So, instead of making a review video, I decided to mod the crap out of it instead. Starting with the unboxing, it comes with the keyboard itself, an instruction manual, a list of function controls, a cheap keycap puller, extra switches, and a USB-C cable. The first step of disassembling the keyboard is taking off the keycaps and the switches. Next, I unscrewed the four screws on the back which let me take the plate and PCB out of the case after disconnecting the battery. After that, I unscrewed the plate from the PCB and then I cut the middle of the plate out using a Dremel. This gives the switches in the middle a much more resonant sound since they're not dampened by contact with the metal plate. The end result was pretty messy, but functionally it worked just fine. I wouldn't recommend doing this if you don't know what you're doing. In my case, I started out using the wrong bits and I got really lucky I didn't get hurt when they exploded. The next thing I did was put some 3M VHB tape on the PCB. I decided to experiment with using this tape because after removing the middle of the plate, the switches were super loose because there was nothing holding them in place. The tape did a good job making sure the switches wouldn't move anywhere, and on top of that, it has a dampening, foam-like texture that improved the sound of the keyboard in a similar way that PE Foam does. If you don't know what the PE Foam mod is, I'll leave a link in the description explaining how it works. The only downside of doing this is that once you get the switches in, it's next to impossible to get them back out. I would only recommend doing this if you never plan on taking your switches out of your keyboard again. After screwing the plate and PCB together again, I put the switches and the stabilizers back in. Unfortunately, I don't have the footage of this because I ended up taking so much longer than I expected to get all of the switches in and stabilizers tuned. I also bent way more pins than I care to admit. For the switches, I used a Franken switch made from the tops of Boba switches, the bottoms of Duroc T1s, and the stems from Halo slash KO Palaya switches, all lubed with 3203. For the stabilizers, I just took the stock stabilizers that came with the keyboard, stripped the lube off, wire balanced them, wholly modded the housings, and then re-lubed them with 205G0. For the keycaps, I decided to use GMK Samurai because they're the cheapest GMK set you can buy right now. For the bottom case, I started with removing a lot of the unnecessary plastic, including the four standoffs at the bottom. I won't be needing them anymore since I will be friction fitting the plate and PCB into the case instead of screwing it in. Before the final assembly, there's one more thing I wanted to do, which is filling the bottom case with pennies. I laid down layers of pennies and clear double-sided tape before covering everything with a layer of masking tape to hold it all in place. The extra weight gives the keyboard a much denser, less hollow, and overall more premium sound. After that, I cut a piece of foam to put over the top of everything. Because I removed the standoffs for the bottom case, I'm going to be mounting the plate and PCB with a screwless gummy o-ring mount. How this works is basically... You take a gummy o-ring, which is like a big rubber band, and stretch it between the plate and PCB. Then, the whole fixture is friction fit into the walls of the case. This gives the keyboard a lot more flex for a bouncier feel, as well as makes the sound a lot more uniform across the board when compared to the standard screw-in tray mount. To assemble the keyboard from this point, all you need to do is align the plate and PCB with the bottom case and then press it in. One thing I forgot to mention earlier is that because of the o-ring mount, the PCB sits much higher in the case than normal, so you have to file the opening for the USB-C port slightly taller. Overall, I'm pretty happy with how this build turned out. It was fun experimenting with a bunch of stuff I haven't seen anyone else do, and the end result far exceeded any expectations I had for the keyboard. Here's the before and after sound test. <laughs> 